have exciting news from the world of hedgehog research. I'm Dr. Sophie Lund Rasmussen, or Dr. Hedgehog, and I'm directing the hedgehog research project called the Danish Hedgehog Project. The Danish Hedgehog Project is a citizen science project where volunteers collected dead hedgehogs for my research from all over Denmark, allowing me to use the dead hedgehogs to better understand the living. A total of 697 dead hedgehogs were collected, and my colleagues and I have just published a scientific study where we tested 299 of these hedgehogs for endoparasites. That is, parasites living inside the body of the hedgehogs. We used hearts, lungs, intestines and livers from the dead hedgehogs to search for endoparasites. Perhaps it's not the most delicious subject, but please hang on, uh, because the results are actually quite interesting. We found that 69%, that is two thirds of the hedgehogs we examined, that they hosted endoparasites. This shows us that it's completely natural for hedgehogs to carry endoparasites. Because we had used the hedgehogs from the Danish Hedgehog Project for a range of different studies, we already had quite an extensive background knowledge about these hedgehogs. We know their sex, when they died, their geographical location, where they came from, whether they came from a rural or an urban area, whether they carried the bacterium MRSA or not, how inbred they were, and their exact age. So this allowed us to test whether some of these factors were actually determinants of endoparasite occurrence in the hedgehogs. We discovered that the juvenile hedgehogs, uh, that is individuals below one year of age, less often had endoparasites compared to older individuals. And we found that individuals of one year had a higher occurrence of endoparasites compared to individuals of two years of age. So it seems that the hedgehogs around the age of one um, are more often carrying endoparasites compared to other age groups. That is really interesting. Denmark consists of islands uh, and peninsulas, and even though the hedgehogs are excellent swimmers, we do not expect them uh, to move freely between the islands. And that was also interesting because some of the different species of endoparasites were only found in hedgehogs from Jutland. We also discovered that the hedgehogs from Jutland more often had endoparasites compared to individuals from Sealand. And we saw that some of the parasites that are really common in hedgehogs throughout Europe, such as fluke, uh, were very rarely seen in the Danish hedgehogs. Out of 299 individuals tested, we only found one case of fluke. This is probably explained by the fact that Denmark is only connected to mainland Europe uh, via Jutland, which could also explain why we found more species of endoparasites and a higher occurrence of endoparasites in the hedgehogs from Jutland. So what can we use this knowledge for? Well, first of all, we can conclude that it's completely natural for hedgehogs to carry endoparasites, and they seem to coexist nicely. This must have been the case for ages, but it's not until now that we've investigated this thoroughly for the Danish hedgehogs. Sometimes the parasitic burden in the hedgehogs become too high, uh, and, and that is making the hedgehogs ill. So they'll lose weight, they'll get diarrhea, they'll get difficulties breathing because they have so many worms gathering in their lungs, and they will often get secondary infections such as pneumonia due to the high presence uh, of lungworm. So these hedgehogs should of course be treated, otherwise they'll risk dying from these uh, high endoparasitic burdens. However, the individuals that do not show signs of illness caused by endoparasites should not be treated because then we'll risk contributing to the resistance development. And how would we treat against endoparasites if the medicine stops having an effect? So this is really important. And what happens if all the endoparasites in a hedgehog um, is, is no longer there to compete with each other. So if we wipe out, out all the endoparasites from this particular he hedgehog, what would happen then? Uh, would, would there be space for a new massive endoparasite infection because the parasites don't have to compete with one another? 
And what happens to the immune systems of these hedgehogs if the immune system isn't busy dealing with endoparasites? Will the hedgehogs then start to develop allergies or autoimmune diseases, other autoimmune diseases uh, as we see in humans? So we don't know, but it's worth considering what actually happens to the hedgehogs when we just treat every single individual uh, for endoparasites because it's a completely natural thing for them. That is one thing we can conclude, to carry endoparasites. So now that we know there's a huge difference in the species of endoparasites found in hedgehogs from different areas of the country in Denmark, it becomes even more evident that hedgehogs should only be cared for locally and should be released back into the area from which they came to reduce the risk of spreading endoparasite infections into new areas. Um, so this is an important point as well. And then lastly, some of these parasites we found are also infectious to humans and pets and other species of wildlife. So it's therefore extremely important uh, to keep a strict hygiene if you're feeding the hedgehogs in your garden. Make sure to clean the feeding bowls on a regular basis to reduce the risk of transmission of parasites to yourself, to your pets, but definitely also between the hedgehogs if they share the same food bowl. Remember to wash your hands or use hand sanitizers uh, when you've handled the feeding bowls. So there's no reason to panic. I mean, these endoparasites have been, have been around for ages. Nothing has changed there. But now that we actually know that two thirds of the hedgehogs will carry endoparasites, this is something we should be aware of and cautious about for our own sakes, but definitely also for the sakes of the hedgehogs to protect them from in infecting each other. So, if you would like to read the full scientific article with all its details, it can be downloaded from here. If you would like to follow my research, please feel free to do so on Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, YouTube or ResearchGate, where all my publications are available. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. And thank you for watching this video about endoparasites of hedgehogs. <laughs>